we're just going to start with an overview of how bias can arise in randomized trials and if you did attend the um, the, the first session you will have seen uh, this this slide before um, it's a depiction of a basic randomized uh, trial and there are different kinds of bias that can arise throughout the conduct of a trial and the dissemination of the results and the key domains that are covered in uh, Rob 2 and that we think that can, uh, can are domains that bias can occur and occur at different stages of the trial and when we're doing a risk of bias assessment we're looking at particular features that can be implemented that minimize the risk of bias at each stage and so the sort of the stages and the domains are uh, the process of randomizing participants into intervention groups during the trial whether there were deviations from the planned interventions um, which should not be a problem if everyone is uh, is unaware of the intervention assignments so for example in the presence of blinding um, the the possibility that participants drop out or do not have outcome data measured for some other reason the way that the um, outcome is actually or outcomes are measured and finally, the reporting of the results or the cherry picking of the results, although in Julian's picture, that looks much more like an apple, in my opinion. But anyway, cherry picking. Um, so empirical research and theory indicate that these are the components likely to have an important impact on study results, leading to inaccurate estimates of the effect of intervention. And in this session, we will be covering uh, bias arising from the randomization process and there are other sessions which will go through the other domains in detail. So uh, bias arising from the randomization process. So what are we trying to achieve uh, by randomization? Well if successfully accomplished randomization avoids either known or unknown prognostic factors and by prognostic factors, we mean factors that predict the outcome, such as severity of illness or presence of comorbidities, influencing intervention group assignment. And this means that on average, the intervention groups have the same prognosis before the start of intervention. So they're balanced or interchangeable. You're looking for two groups that look the same. are used during randomization, there may be biased allocation to groups. Prognostic factors that influence the intervention group to which participants are may influence um, the intervention group to which participants are assigned to. And that if this happens, the estimated effect of the intervention could be biased by confounding, which occurs when there are common causes of intervention group assignment and outcome. So that factors that predict the outcome influence group allocation. Another thing that can uh, happen is that there can be biased enrollment into a study if group assignment is predictable. So knowledge of the next assignment can enable selective enrollment of participants on the basis of prognostic factors. So participants who would have been assigned to one or the other groups that that group is deemed to be inappropriate may be rejected and in epidemiological terms this is a type of selection bias so bias allocation to groups can introduce confounding bias enrollment into the study can introduce selection bias so adequate randomization and allocation concealment and by allocation concealment, we mean concealment of the allocation sequence for and until the assignment to prevent both bias allocation to groups and bias enrollment into the study. So it should um, prevent both type of bias. So in a trial, randomization is a two-step process. We first of all, um, generate an unbiased, unpredictable allocation sequence, which has an element of chance. And then subsequently, the allocation sequence must be concealed from participants and trial personnel until after recruitment has been confirmed. So as we said, 
the first step is generating the allocation sequence to randomly assign participants into experimental or comparator intervention groups. And the aim of this is to generate intervention groups that have the same prognosis before the start of intervention. And there are various methods for generating the allocation sequence, but the important thing is that they are unpredictable. And these days, the allocation sequence is almost always computer generated. But other low, lower tech approaches, such as tossing a coin or throwing a dice, are perfectly acceptable ways of uh, generating an unpredictable sequence. And there are lots of different terms that can be used when you, they're describing randomization. So randomization may be uh, simple or unrestricted, which means that there's just one group of participants and people are just uh, randomized uh, without any restriction. Or randomization uh, may be done in blocks, which might be uh, important, for example, if you have a small trial and you want to make sure that there are an equal number of participants in each group. So um, then this the, ran the randomization occurs within blocks of a certain size. So for example, if you were randomizing into an intervention in a comparator group, so you have two groups and you wanted to randomize in a one-to-one -one ratio, if you had a block size of six, three people would be assigned to each group. And you can vary the block sizes, so you could have uh, a random uh, block size generator as well as the um, randomization sequence itself, so that you could end up with one block of six followed by a block of four followed by a block of 10, for example, and this is uh, termed randomly permuted blocks. Randomization may also be stratified, which means that it's uh, performed separately within subsets of participants defined by potentially important prognostic factors. So this means that you get the same, for example, if you thought age was an important prognostic factor, uh, this uh, helps make sure that age is balanced between, um, between the two groups. Uh, alternatively, you can use a technique called minimization. Uh, minimization is uh, based on a slightly different principle from uh, randomization, but generally there's also a random element and is a secure, it should be a secure allocation system when used by an independent person. Um, and then there might be other more exotic methods of randomization which are uh, described in a paper and some of these more unusual methods might require you to consult with a methodologist to determine whether they are adequate or not. But as I said, the general feature of adequate methods of randomization is that they uh, produce an unpredictable sequence. Inadequate methods of randomization produce a predictable sequence. And uh, the main problem with these methods is that because they are predictable, they are rarely difficult to conceal. And then uh, all of the problems related to lack of allocation concealment, which we're going to go through, uh, may be um, present.